everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and God bless you. And uh, I just want to open with a word of prayer. I have an announcement, then we'll have a little call to worship. So let me uh, have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today, and thank you for your love for us, your presence with us right now. Lord, wherever we're at, you're with us. And so, Lord, uh, we look forward to your word today. We look forward to having a chance to uh, sing some songs and uh, hear some scripture and Lord, uh, just thank you for an opportunity we have to gather together. Even though we're separate, we're gathering at the same time, at least the group right now is. And Lord, we're having a chance to have church together. So thank you so much for that. And Lord, I pray that as we uh, tune in and as we're listening right now, Lord, I would pray that you would meet us at that place of need we have in each of our hearts, in our lives. And Lord, I would pray that you would... Uh, help us as we journey through life. It's so confusing sometimes. And Lord, we're going to talk about that today. Uh, Lord, there's a way that, that seems right to us, but is it, is it right? We want to walk in your path. And so, Lord, uh, just thank you so much for your word, and thank you so much for your presence. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, we have uh, just one announcement I want to give you today. We have the baptism service coming up here at the church next Sunday at the 1030 service. It actually happens at the end of that service. Again, want to let you know, just in case some of you can make, make the time to drive this way, if uh, being baptized is something that you would like to, to be. And so wanted to let you know that one more time. If you'd contact the church office, that would uh, help us because we need to have a conversation before that happens. And, uh, but we're looking forward to baptism uh, next week and to see what, what God has for us through that. So also, while I'm on that subject, I guess I would say next week is Communion Sunday also. And so we're going to have communion and baptism all on the same day. And so I think that's going to be a great day for us. And we're going to be learning about communion. Why do we do communion? What's it all about? We're going to be learning about that next week. So, uh, and then uh, Bible reading. This is our last Sunday as we have been going through, and I can't read your Bible for you, uh, sermon series. And at the end of today, uh, Julie's going to come on, and she's going to be sharing with us uh, about the Bible reading challenge. Some of you have already let us know, hey, that's something I want to do, but we're going to be able to read the Bible through, the New Testament through, I should say, in 92 days. And so you'll hear more about that and just uh, towards the end of our service. But uh, right now I'd like to just kind of quiet our hearts a little bit. I don't know what kind of week you had last week. Uh, wow, our week started off with Monday night going to the Green Bay Packer football game. And woo, Green Bay won, and of course I'm actually also a Detroit Lion fan, and Detroit lost, and uh, so. But we had a great time there, and a great time of of doing that. But then you get home, and Tuesday's kind of one of those tired day because we got home about two thirty in the morning, and so Tuesday's kind of one of those days. Wow, did Tuesday actually happen? And then you get the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I don't know, it's Sunday already. And so maybe you've had a week that's been kind of confusing and kind of a lot of things happening. So let me give us some scripture to help kind of tie us into this. And this is from Psalm chapter 63, verses 1 through 4, and then I'll be reading from the New Testament also. O oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon the power of, and your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. New Testament, book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give him advice? And who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory all glory to him forever. Amen. Let's sing together.
Speak, O Lord. Wow. Uh, great song and, and a song that kind of sets us up for the, the sermon for today. Uh, you know, I, I have this feeling that sometimes God says, I, I, I want to share with you and, and to share with you one of the means for God to share with us. There's a lot of different ways he can communicate to us, but one of the means is through his word. It's, it's written for us, and he's, he's wanting us to get in and, and dig some things out because there's some things there we can find about us, we can find about other people, we can find about God and our walk with him. And so uh, <clears throat> we ask God to speak, and I think what we need to do is say, Lord, I'm going to spend time in your word. Speak to me as I get into your word because I need to hear from you. We're talking today about God's way, <clears throat> and God's way uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say like, okay, college, high school student going to college, like what college does God want me to go to, okay? So I'm not talking about God's way like that. Uh, I'm not talking about God's way like, okay, well, I've been given three job offers. Which one should I work? Where does he want me to go? Uh, I'm not talking about that. So I'm not talking about some of those pinpoint kind of things. What I'm talking about is, is God's way. Uh, he has a way that he wants us to live. He has a way that he wants us to walk. And there's, there's a path, and we can stay on his path. And regardless of where we're going to work, regardless of where we're going to college, regardless of whatever else, uh, there's a way that he wants us to be. Uh, because if we've committed our life to Jesus, we're a follower of Christ. And because of being a follower of Christ, everything from our life should show that that's true. And so the big idea for today is this, to live life God's way, I need to follow God's word closely. If I'm going to live life God's way, I've got to figure out what is that way. And the best way to discern that is to get into God's word. Now, <clears throat> I want to put a little parenthesis here and just say this. If you're counting on everything that you're going to hear from God every week, you're, you're putting that on me. <laughs> Don't put that on me, all right? Uh, because... I have to give what I feel that God has given me to give. That's what I need to do here. But I'm not so sure that I'm the one who's responsible for everybody's growth and for everybody to get everything from God for an entire week in about 20 to 30 minutes of time on a Sunday morning. And so, and if I were in the building right now and having church, I could probably look around and see a few people who look like they're about ready to doze off, if you know what I mean. So they might miss that 30 minute little thing and totally miss it. So uh, to live life God's way, I need to follow God's word closely. And if I'm going to follow God's word closely, I need to be getting into God's word. And again, this sermon series has, it's here so that I can kind of push you a little bit to say, hey, how about getting into Bible reading? We do have a big project that we've got that we're going to do, some of us together. However, uh, I'm trying to push everybody to spend some time in God's Word. Matter of fact, did you find yourself spending a little bit of time in God's Word last week? Now, if it wasn't every day, if it was one or two days or whatever, that, that, if it's better than what it was, then I'm accomplishing my goal. Today we're in two passages, one Old Testament passage, one New Testament passage, and I'm going to kind of go back and forth. I'll try to let you know each time where I'm at, but Isaiah chapter 55 and then Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. So let me read this scripture to you. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 9. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to God for he will forgive generously. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Or my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than yours, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That's the Old Testament reading. Now I'd like to move to Matthew chapter 4. And in Matthew chapter 4, this is the temptation of Jesus. He's been led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. He's just had baptism. He's been led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. And now he's being tempted. And here's one of his answers. He says this, But Jesus told him, talking about the devil, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So I would like to take those two passages 
those two kind of stories from God's Word. I want to just bring them together, but I want to pull some things out because I think there's some important things for us, especially as we're thinking about living life and incorporating God's Word in such a way that it's the foundation of everything that we do. So, in Isaiah, we have this little interaction in verse 7. It says, let the wicked change their ways. Banish the thought of doing wrong. And then God, let them turn to God, and then he'll have mercy on them, let them turn to God, and he'll forgive them. What, what does that sound like to you? T- to me, it sounds like salvation. It sounds like turning from your way to God's way. And, of course, in the Old Testament, there, there isn't anything about Jesus here. In the New Testament, you say it would be turning and committing your life to Jesus. You're, you're confessing your sins, and you understand that he died on the cross for you, that he was buried, and he walked out of the tomb, and you're placing your faith, your hope, and everything in him. The Old Testament, they had to come to God, but they did have to change their ways and to change their thoughts. And so when I think of salvation, I always think of this. I think we should never try to reduce God's work for our salvation to an explanation that we can understand. Uh, His ways are higher than our ways. And so some people have tried to reduce down so small what God can do in the area of salvation. They've got God in this little box saying, well, God can only do these things to save somebody. I, I've seen some reports. I read some things that says right now in Iran, Iraq, and some of those places over there, the people are having dreams, they're having visions, and people are coming to Christ. Can, can God do that? What? Can he do that? Yes, he can. And so there is a, a, a tendency to kind of try to put everything about salvation into like one small little box. And I think God has a different way of working with each one of us in coming to know him. Matter of fact, in the things that God knows, uh, there is no way that I'm ever going to be able to completely understand everything. And I would say, you know, it'd be easy for me to say this. I'm never going to completely understand everything on this side of heaven, but when I get into heaven, I will. Uh, However, I... God, I believe when I get to heaven, God's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And his plans, what he has for us to do, I think I'm going to be learning and growing there also. And so a saving relationship with God uh, doesn't really depend on my complete understanding of everything. How can I understand everything? Now, this morning, uh, when Julie and I came here to get ready for me to do this in Studio B, when we came to the building here... uh, I got in the car, I put the key in, I I turned it and it started and I put it in gear and backed out and drove, drove here, got here and parked and came in. Um, Do I know everything about um, an engine of a car? (laughs) No, hardly anything. I know you need gas and I know you should put oil in. And those are two things that I know. Uh, I do know a few other things, but if something's broke, I don't try to fix it on my own. I need to take it to somebody somewhere to have that done because I don't understand a, a car engine. I, 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 I don't get it. Don't understand all the workings of every little piece. I open up the hood, because sometimes it says check engine, so I open it up and, yep, it's there, boom. And so, but I don't under. does that stop me from driving the car? No, just went to Baraboo last night for a wedding and back. Does it stop me from driving the car? No, I, I drive, we go places, we do things. And so I don't have to understand everything. And sometimes I think what we think is we got to understand everything about God. we got to understand everything about the Bible. Then we can finally come to him. Uh, it's not so much that we understand everything. It's that we accept that Jesus Christ died on that cross for us. And uh, we want to accept God's word. And one of my definitions for faith, shortcut version, is this. Uh, faith is, is a God-given ability that God's given to me to take God at his word. And I really believe that's what faith is. It's taking God at his word. And he said it, I believe it, and I'm okay with that. I'm ready to move on now with life. And so in this context, as we dig in just a little bit deeper, uh, kind of the, the picture that I see here is this. There's an appeal to people to exchange their sinful thoughts, their sinful way, to change those in for God's perfect ways. And so I believe there's a little bit of an invitation for us to exchange our sinful thoughts, our sinful ways, 
uh, in for God's thoughts, which are higher, which are sin-free, which one author said are nobler and more magnificent. And so it, this is a uh, kind of, a, a, of asking, we, I want you to change your thoughts in for my thoughts and your ways in for mine. Um, I found this, one author said this, more broadly, theologians have recognized that God, the incomparable creator, is far above his, inf- his finite creatures. God is here and we're way down here, way above and beyond uh, our ability to comprehend him fully and everything that he's doing. Now, I can have some knowledge. It's, it's partial and perfect at best. He goes on to say this, but because God is perfectly wise, in all his thoughts and ways, people can take great comfort amid hardships and when all of a sudden we have these mysteries of life come and also these tragedies of life come, we can just rest in God. But I, I'm, I'm here to say the only way that you're going to do that is you need to be someone who's digging into God's word to find out how this God operates, what this God does, how this God kind of goes outside the line sometimes that we might say he's got to stay in. I think he can do this because he's infinite and I'm finite. He's the creator, I'm the created. Uh, He knows everything. I don't know that much. Matter of fact, there's probably more that I don't know than there is that I do. One of my favorite uh, teachers when I was in Bible school used to say this, well, I'm going to kind of mull that around a little bit in my peanut-sized brain. He would always say peanut-sized brain because he just wanted us to know, hey, that's about how big things are. And kind of let that mull around a little bit there. Uh, God is perfectly wise, and probably at best, a lot of times, I'm pretty much unwise. And so, I think as we we look at who God is and who we are, His thoughts and His ways, our thoughts and our ways, we can see, no, I need to exchange some things. And the best way to exchange that is to become a student of God's Word and to search for God with all of your heart. Well, in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, this is, again, where the Spirit of God uh, leads Jesus to the wilderness. Now, it's important here to remember that the Spirit led Jesus out here, but the Spirit did not tempt Jesus in any way. Uh, The devil tempted Jesus. That's where the temptation comes from. And this is the first of three temptations. And in all three temptations... Jesus uses scripture to fight back something that the devil is offering. And so this first one, Jesus has this intense hunger because now he has been uh, not with, he's not ate any food for 40 days. And that's when the devil comes to tempt him. And so here Jesus is and the spirit has brought him to this place. He's taken 40 days to fast and pray. And now the devil comes in with temptation. And the devil just basically says, hey, you're really hungry. You ought to make yourself the turning that rock into a loaf of bread. I mean, wouldn't that be, oh, man, if you had a little honey on the side, nice butter, melt that on there, mm, 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 that would be so delicious. And Jesus says, well, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Jesus never uses any of the miracles in his miracle ability uh, for self-serving reasons. They're always to reach out to somebody else. You see, God will sustain him uh, in spiritual nourishment, Jesus says in this passage. Spiritual nourishment takes priority over physical nourishment. And that's interesting because I'm not sure how many of us ever miss a meal or snacks in between. Okay? I think we do pretty good. All right? Matter of fact, I have this thing happens in our town here. There's this uh, siren goes off every day at noon, and at noon I know I'm hungry, and i got to go get some food. Even if I ate breakfast at 10 o'clock, it's noon, I've got to eat. And so I don't see us missing that. I see us kind of sliding God's word off to the side because we don't quite have enough time. And and I I think here Jesus is saying that, wow, there's the spiritual nourishment that we can get from God's word needs to take precedence. It needs to take priority over even this physical food that we can have. And so 
is it possible that Jesus is spurring you on and I'm able to use these messages to push you a little bit to say, hey, it's important. Let's get into God's word. It is so important. Uh, verse 4, Jesus responds to each of the temptations by quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, and in doing this, I thought, I thought this was really interesting. In doing this, Jesus links his experience in the wilderness with the temptation from devil with Israel's wandering in the wilderness. In the very first time he talks about it, he says this. He talks about man does not live by bread alone. Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2, Moses reminds the Israelites of God's testing through hunger and his miraculous provision of manna. And so when you see this, you can't live by bread alone. This is reminding that the, the hearers as they're hearing this, oh, that's the Israelites. They had manna. God gave this incredible gift called manna. Wow, it sounds like God's word might be a little bit more important than manna, every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hey, who, what else did they get while they were in the wilderness? They got the Ten Commandments. They, they got the law given to them, and, and yet they went ahead and kind of wandered in their own paths and down their own directions. And so I think Matthew chapter 4 teaches us much about God's word, and we, we, we need to be hungry for that. We need to be thirsty for that. And we need to really uh, want to get into God's word. That was a scripture reading that I used for our call to worship today. So back in the book of Isaiah, verse, chapter 55, uh, there's something that I see here. God's compassion on those who turn to him. God has this compassion. It says, uh, if you turn from your wickedness, if you'll turn and not even think about doing wrong, if you'll turn to God, he'll have mercy on you and he'll forgive you. So God's compassion for those who turn to him comes because his thoughts and ways are higher, more superior than human thoughts and ways. Matter of fact, our thoughts and ways, they tend to lean evil. They just do naturally. And so God's plans are something that we would never ever think of. And that's a reminder in Isaiah 55 that we've got to come to him so we can get to know his ways and his plans and his thoughts. And how does God view things? Uh, we can only find that out from God's word. And then back in Matthew chapter 4, in verse 4, if I were going to kind of do a fly over here, I'd say this. God took care of Israel in the wilderness and he gave them manna. Bread, important for them to physically live on, so important. But there was a greater gift. And the greater gift than man are the commandments and teachings. And today we would say the commandments and teachings of Jesus. We would say all of Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament. And by the way, uh, Israel failed. They failed over and over and over and over again. God's unfailing love always allowed them to come back. But they failed. And guess what? Jesus will not fail. He will not fail. So as Jesus is comparing himself, his experience, he's using these verses from the book of Deuteronomy, which puts us right into the wandering, right into Israel. He's saying this, hey, they failed there. Uh, devil, I'm not going to fail. And I think that's important. I think that's important. So I don't know. Have you ever, have you ever received anything where you got to put directions together? You know, you got to use directions to put something together. You know, you got, to, you got a manual. You know, sometimes I'm amazed at somehow how big some of these manuals are. But anyway, you, you, you got to put this thing together that you're going to do, and you get these directions. And, I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Most times I kind of skim read at best uh, the directions that I have. And I, I don't know. I think maybe the word skim might be a little generous. Uh, I'm kind of looking down and kind of looking at some pictures and kind of looking at some of the words they say and go, oh yeah, oh yeah, got this, got this, got this. Uh, there are those times though that I've dug into something where it takes in t an intense look at it. It's going to be like, I just read that paragraph. I need to read that paragraph three or four more times and I'm going to have to study this because this, this is big, this is important. I need to hear this. Of course, nowadays, what do we do? Uh, we got a project that we want to do, and we can't quite figure it out. So what do we do? We just get on Google, and we type in our question, how do you remove a screen door? And uh, all of a sudden, there it is. Who'd have thought? There's these two little wheels that hang down. Who'd have thought? And so 
uh, you, you learn, it kind of looked like that, and you kind of go there, and so here's someone acting it out for you. That's probably better. And even at best, we probably kind of skim through that a little bit, too. Uh, we punch into a couple, and we go a little bit into it and go, oh, yeah, got it, got it, here we go. So what I would like to do today is I want to bring the things that we've been talking about, I want to bring it down to us in our level. And I just want to, let me, let me take my jacket off, it's getting a little warm in here. Um, I want you to be able to read what I have on my uh, shirt here, which says, uh, I, ca I can't read your Bible for you. And so that's going to be a good reminder as we come into the uh, ending here uh, to make sure that we're saying, hey, I've got to be into God's Word. This is something that I have to do. Uh, matter of fact, let me put another little parenthesis here and say this. If, if the maturity, your growth as a Christian if you are leaving that to this 20 minutes or 30 minutes together, uh, wow, don't pin that on me. That's, that's not, I'm, I'm supposed to equip. I'm supposed to equip you to do the works of ministry, and I, I learned that in God's Word. I'm supposed to be giving God's Word. But uh, am I responsible for your growing and your maturing? It seems like that should be your responsibility. And I'm just letting you know God's Word is a part of that. Uh, one person explained it this way. He said, it's just like a gym that has all these kind of things that you can exercise on. They have equipped you with all the equipment that you need. But you are the one who needs to sit on each piece of equipment and do the work. You're the one who has to do the work. And so that's what I, that's what I see here as I come to God's Word. So I can't read your Bible for you. And I can't get you to the place where you're going to be digging in and you're going to be doing some things so that you mature in your walk with Christ. And so here's some things that I have from these passages that I kind of picked out for myself, but I will share them with you. The only way I can exchange my thoughts and ways for God's thoughts and ways is I need to be reading and reading and reading the Bible and applying it to my life. I don't think it does any good to read and get to know a lot of things if you don't apply it to your life and if it doesn't make a difference. And so if I want to exchange my thoughts and my ways in for God's, I need to be reading God's Word and applying it to, my, to myself. And I believe all biblical knowledge ultimately is supposed to be applied and is supposed to be uh, put into action in our life so we become not only readers or hearers of the word but also doers also. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 I find this verse it says there is a path before each person that seems right but it ends in death. And there can be a lot of things that we think are right. There can be a lot of ways. That, I mean, we can really, some of us are pretty smart, and we could even say, okay, we're going to work church this way and this way and this way, and we're going to do this and this. We can do that. Far better is for us to say, what is it that God wants us to do? What is it that God wants us to do? And even though these things seem right, we need to spend some time in His Word. We need to spend some time in prayer saying, what is there? His ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are so much higher than ours. And uh, I'm not sure that my little peanut brain, size brain, can probably attain to those things. So I need to be saturated with God's Word. I need to be reading God's Word and saturating myself with His Word. Uh, the next thing I learned was this. My ideas are the best? <laughs> not really. Um, so... I, I, I need to come for God's ideas. I need to come for thought, God's thoughts. It's his world. I, I'm here because of him. And so I need to find his thoughts. And, and, and how can I get to know what Jesus wants me to do apart from the word of God? Am I just going to make up some things? Well, that feels like it's falling back on me. If I come to God's word and he says there's something called the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, if, if he gives me those things, then I'm saying, wow, the Holy Spirit lives within me. Those things should be coming out of me. If they're not, there's something happening here, and I need to figure out what that is. My own ideas, my own thoughts, my own ways. No, his are much, much higher. And the last one I have is this. Remember, I've been talking lately about the physical, spiritual. Well, here's another verse. Uh, living by bread alone. I'm just going to say it this way. Living by bread alone won't work. I believe that that bread alone is the physical part. I'm going to 
kind of pick and choose my direction. I'm going to pick and choose what I want to do. I'm going to pick and choose this or that. And I'm not really going to consider God. I'm just going to do it on my own. I see that as the physical part. And you, you can make it through life doing that. Sure, why not? I don't know if it's where God wants you to be, though. And then every word that comes from the mouth of God, that's the spiritual part. And I, that's, that's where I want to be. And so I, I wrote this question down. How many times do I live by bread alone? In the decisions I'm making and the things that I'm doing, probably more times than I, than I care to admit. I want to live by God's word. I want to live by the spiritual zone. That's where I want to get to. And have the spiritual zone instruct the physical zone. It doesn't say that eating bread is wrong, but there is a verse that says whatever you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. How do I know how to do that? I need to read the Bible. And so I need to spend more time on my knees praying to God. I need to spend more time in his word. And so uh, I wrote this down. Not so sure that this is an option. I think it's mandatory. So it's not optional. I think it's mandatory that we get into God's word. So before I have Julie come and she's going to share with us the I can't read your Bible for you Bible reading challenge uh, before she shares a little bit more about that. I, I want to say this, what, what's the elephant standing on your air hose right now? What's the elephant who's standing on your spiritual air hose? What is it that's stopping you from getting into God's Word? What is it that's stopping you from applying God's Word to your life? What is the elephant who's on your air hose who isn't allowing you to get that clean, clear, and as much spiritual oxygen as you need to grow and to live. What is that elephant? Is it fear? Is it, I just don't know enough about the Bible. I can't get in. I can't read it. Is it uh, pride? I've got better things to do than to spend time with God. Uh, is it your, your time schedule is just way too tight and you just can't seem to wiggle out any time even to read a few verses? Um, is it because it just, you know, God, his way doesn't really mean that much to me. I, I got him pushed off to the side. What is the elephant that's standing on your spiritual air holes right now? And why, why are you allowing that to happen? So that might be a really good thing to think about. Well, here at the church, we have uh, this Bible reading challenge. And this Bible really reading challenge for us, I believe, is... Uh, is a gift from God, and we've got quite a few people that are, are getting ready to uh, do this challenge, and uh, Julie will let you know a little bit about this, but I'm going to have her come right now and share with us the I Can't Read Your Bible For You Bible Reading Challenge. Let's take a minute and talk about the I Can't Read Your Bible For You Bible Reading Challenge. We are so excited to be doing this together, and Man, we invite you to join us in any way that you can. You know, the things that Pastor Kendall shared this morning, um, the Bible is um, meant to be bread for daily use, not a cake for special occasions. So that's what we're trying um, to do with this Bible reading challenge. And I don't know what Bible reading, um, what that sounds like to you, if it sounds overwhelming, if it sounds boring, if it sounds, I can't understand this, if it sounds like, um, like I just don't have time to do this. But we, we are seeking to uh, read the New Testament together. 92 days, 3 months, 20 minutes a day. That's all it takes. So here's how you can get started. First of all, you can commit by letting us know that you're in. Um, there is a link this morning on the chat that will take you to our resource page on the website. There's a form there that you can say, hey, I'm in, I'm going to do this. Then go to our website, sgcommunitychurch.org, and there is a resource page there. Um, we have worked hard to put a resource page up that includes the Bible reading plan you can print out. It includes um, each day's podcast to listen to, which is a recap of what you just read, and uh, videos, overview videos, if you like to watch those when you start a new book. Subscribe to the Bible Recap Podcast so you can either link through our resource page on our website or you can just download the Bible Recap Podcast on your podcast platform and listen to it each day. If you're really comfortable with digital, you can download the Bible app 
and choose the Bible Recap Reading Plan. There's a lot of reading plans on the Bible app, but choose that one, and it will guide you through, and you can track that way. So, um, and also I want to let you know that in the digital bulletin, there's a... Um, there's a notice in there that gives you all that you need to and a link to the resource page. So, um, so I think if you, I want to I wanna draw attention to just a few really nice things about this Bible reading plan. Number one is that you do a little bit of a prayer before you start each day's reading, which is wonderful. You ask God to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You um, ask God to let any knowledge that you gain to help you love others more rather than to puff you up. Um, you ask God to help you see something brand new about him. And you ask God to correct any lies or misunderstandings you might have about him because we, we learn those things as we read, our, read scripture. And then we ask God to direct our steps according to his word. So we are challenging you. Um, we also have, there is also available on the Bible Recap website, a book, which is each podcast and you can order this if you're really like, I don't want to listen to a podcast. I don't even know what that is. You can order this book for $25. It's the podcast in written form each day. So that's a really great resource too. Um, and the last thing is, is take advantage of the website resource page. We've tried to put everything on there that you need to do this challenge. So I'm, I'm really convinced that if you commit to this Bible reading challenge, you're going to find out the Bible's exciting, it's understandable, it's crucial to your spiritual growth. Because really, the more that you read the Bible, the more you're going to love the author, who is God. So if you have any questions, message us um, through the Facebook page, call the church, and I can help you get started. We're really excited to get this going, and we invite you to join us. And we do our part by reading the scriptures, and we let God do his part in molding our heart and our minds as individuals and also as a church. Thanks. Right. God's word is bread of life, not cake for special occasions. That was awesome. That was good. Okay, so there you go. Some of us have been using God's word just like cake for special occasions. And Julie's just laid this out for us, and we're ready to begin this October 1st. It's just around the corner. And so make sure you attach yourself to that uh, top thing that's posted there and make sure you do everything that you can. Now, uh, for some of us, what we're going to say is that that's, that's just that's way big. And I think it is way big. But make sure you're getting into God's Word. Don't let these sermons just disappear and not affect you. Let me have a word of prayer, and then we're going to sing a song together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for your presence again with us. And Lord, I, I, I have a feeling, some of us are feeling this stirring inside, I would blame it on your Holy Spirit, this stirring inside to say, yes, you need to eat, you're starving, you need to eat God's word, and you need this for your life, and yes, this is the elephant on your air hose, but just get that elephant off there and let, let's go, let's do this. And so Lord, thank you for today, thank you for your word. Lord, this week I need to look for your ways, I need to look for your thoughts, Lord, this week I need to realize that my life can't be just in this physical zone. I've got to allow the spiritual zone to come in and be a foundation for my life. And so, Lord, thank you so much for our time that we've been able to share together. And, Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll see you next time. And I 
Na na 